Welcome back, fellow explorers to Project Markiraji. In this episode, we will explore the first life of Markiraji. But before we do that, we need to explore the continents of Markiraji. I will show you how they drift now. The continent's names are Kaifo, Dextaterra, and Nymphus. Kaifo and Dextaterra form a supercontinent known as Kaifora. Over time Kaifora splits into two. Dextaterra drifts to the right eventually colliding with Nymphus, while Kaifo drifts leftward confined to a solitary existence. The first life to emerge on Markiraji would be single-celled organisms. It is theorized that on Earth, there was a last universal common ancestor or Luca. Markiraji may have a similar organism from which all multicellular life originates. One offshoot of Luca may evolve photosynthesis. The dominant plant color on Markiraji will be yellow. It is important to keep in mind that plants can evolve to be whatever color they want, it just so happens that green is the dominant plant color on Earth. Eventually descendants of these cellular photosynthesizers may converge into one organism. The Dufogyle are the first multicellular photosynthesizers on Markiraji. They consist of multiple cells working together. Some cells capture sunlight for energy production with pigments optimized for Markiraji's dim, cool environment. Others focus on anchoring the organism to the seafloor using structures similar to the holdfasts of Earth's kelp. Their emergence as multicellular photosynthesizers paves the way for a more complex food chain on Markiraji. Descending from the benthic dufogyle, the atophogyle represent a remarkable evolutionary leap. These photosynthesizers possess a gas-filled chamber at their base, allowing them to break free from the seafloor and drift near the surface. This innovation grants them access to a wider range of sunlight. Unlike their dufogyle ancestors, atophogyle lacks the anchoring structures needed on the seabed. Instead, their two prominent leaves drape downwards, maximizing their exposure to the sun's rays while maintaining stability in the gentle currents. This adaptation allows them to exploit a new ecological niche, potentially influencing the development of the surface food web on Markiraji. Emerging alongside the Dufogyle and Atophogyle are the Prima Vitalis, the first multicellular organisms with the ability to move. These planktonic creatures feed on the microscopic Dufogyle and other phytoplankton. Prima vitalis lack complex organs like eyes, relying on other means to navigate their environment. They may use subtle changes in water chemistry or light intensity to orient themselves. While not strong swimmers, they do possess 12 fins, 6 on each side to propel themselves weakly or maintain position in the current. These early multicellular organisms represent a crucial step in Markiraj's biosphere. Their ability to move and seek food lays the groundwork for a more complex food chain and the eventual rise of more sophisticated organisms. Joining the growing menagerie of Markiraj's oceans are the Viata. These small, disc-shaped organisms occupy a unique niche in the ecosystem. They thrive by consuming a marine snow, a steady rain of organic matter that drifts down from the surface layers. Viata lacks complex organs like a through gut. Instead, they may feed digest, and then expel waste through the same opening. This simple yet effective strategy allows them to exploit this abundant food source. They likely propel themselves using contractions of their muscles, allowing them to navigate the sea floor in search of food particles. They also possess two tentacles, which they use to sift through the sediment. It is on the base of these tentacles that the Viata's eyes are located with four on each tentacle. Viata reproduction is likely external, with fertilized eggs drifting freely in the currents. 
As these young viata grow, they may lose their buoyancy and slowly sink towards the seafloor, where they mature into familiar disc-shaped adults. Capping off our survey of Makiraj's early life forms are the Nugiya. These fascinating creatures represent a significant leap in complexity compared to their planktonic brethren. Nugiya possess a greatly enhanced visual system with six eyes, three on each side of their elongated, eel-like bodies. This arrangement may provide them with a wider field of view, crucial for navigating Makiraj's oceans. Nugiya are agile creatures, well adapted for life in the ocean. Their bodies are adorned with 12 fins, six on either side. These fins likely provide them with exceptional maneuverability, allowing them to make swift turns. Additionally, a powerful tail propels them through the water with bursts of speed. Nugia reproduce externally, releasing gametes into the water column. Fertilization likely occurs externally as well, with currents carrying the gametes to each other. The developing Nugia may spend a significant portion of their life cycle as drifting larvae before maturing into the impressive swimmers we observe today. The Nugia marks a turning point in Makiraj's biosphere. Their complex sensory organs, powerful locomotion, and semi-predatory behavior hint at the fascinating arms race that will unfold in the coming episodes. As the first predators evolve, prey species may evolve more sophisticated defenses. Predators will likely counter-adapt, driving ever-increasing complexity in Makiraj's marine ecosystems. Our exploration of Makiraj's young biosphere comes to a close for now. From the pioneering Dufogile, capturing sunlight to fuel life, to the fascinating adaptations of the Viata and Prima Vitalis, we've witnessed the first steps of a complex ecosystem taking root. Join us next time as we explore the potential pathways life on Makiraji might take. Thank you all so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts on these incredible creatures. See you in the next episode.